Hey y'all, it's Nick from Undefeated Productions, and as y'all see by the title, we are covering a big topic. I am giving y'all my grades for each MLB team and their drafts. This is a crazy, crazy big thing. The MLB draft happened last Wednesday and Thursday, and it is currently Sunday, the day I'm recording this, and Monday the video goes out live. As y'all see from the title, I will be giving you my grade for each MLB team's draft. Before we get started, if you guys are new here, my name is Nick. Uh, we upload daily videos at Undefeated Productions here. I also have a, uh, a game, like a channel for Undefeated Entertainment. That's where you know MLB the show. You know different games get uploaded, and then also we have um, my social links down in the description below. Check me out there as well as hit the like button on this video. Helps uh, get more people to see my predictions and my grades. I'm not giving very many predictions. Don't know why I said that. But anyways, let's get right into the video. Starting off with the Arizona Diamondbacks. And I really liked how they started off their draft. Taking Bryce Jarvis first overall. That was a really nice pickup. He fell one spot closer in front of the Mets. And man, I wish he went to the Mets. He had a .89 ERA. He threw a perfect game with Duke before getting drafted. He was a person I really liked the, uh, or wanted the Mets to pick up. The great uh, pickup. In competitive balance round A, they uh, took Slade Ciccini. Uh, third round, they took Liam Norris. Fourth round, AJ Vukovic. And then fifth round, they took Brandon Pafat. So overall, I'm going to give the Diamondbacks a B plus. Like I said, Bryce Jarvis is a player I really like. He's going to be a stud for you guys. Next up, we have the Atlanta Braves. First round, they took Jared Schuster. Sec uh, they did not have a second round pick because they signed Ozuna. And uh, the Diamondbacks, too, they did not have a second ra round pick because they signed Madison Bumgarner. Third round, the Braves took Jesse Franklin. Fourth round, Spencer Strider. Fifth round, Bryce Elder. So overall, the Braves, you know, nothing too too big here. They took a pitcher going on off first. The Braves have a very strong farm system. I really uh, would be interested in seeing how Schuster develops as a left-handed pitcher. He seems to uh, have some potential. I think he had comparisons with Max Fried. Of course, they drafted Fried a couple years back. Overall, for the Braves, not the very strong draft in general. I'm going to give them a C plus. Moving on to the Baltimore Orioles, where they had the number two pick in this year's draft, where they took Heston Kerstad. Shocked a lot of people. Uh, in competitive bounce round A, they took Jordan Westbrook. That was a 30th pick. Uh, in the second round, they took Hudson Haskin, third round, Anthony Servito, fourth round, Kobe Mayo, and fifth round, Carter Balmer. Kesson Herstad, an interesting pick right there. He was ranked around uh, 10 overall in a lot of teams' drafts. He was supposed to probably fall down a little more. The Orioles, what came out with a surprise, drafted the left-handed uh, hitter out of college. Interesting move. Overall, for the Orioles, I'm giving them a grade of the B. Next up, we're giving the Boston Red Sox a grade. The Red Sox, they did something I really liked here. They went out in their first round pick, took Nick York out of uh, Archbishop Midi High School, which is a high school near me. It's a private school. I, w I really like that pick. You know, he I have a few friends that go to Midi that played with him. So, you know, I like this pick right here, in which case that set him up very well. Again, again the Red Sox did not have a second round pick because of the cheating thing with the replay room. Uh, in third round, they ended up taking Blaze Jordan. Fourth round, Jeremy U. Yeland. Fifth round, Shane Dorland. Again, like I said, there was a bunch of strategy that went in here. Nick York, he has been said, uh, because he was ranked about 140th, he's said to be taking less money to sign with the Red Sox to give him more money elsewhere, in which case they can go out and they can spend on Blaze Jordan, in which case he is going to be hitting homers over the Green Monster forever. He hit a 500-foot home run at the age of 13 at Globe Live Park. Man, that was crazy. Blaze Jordan, he's going to be a stud if you can figure out his bat. He doesn't really have a uh, fielding, so when he comes up, expect him to be playing probably the DH position in Boston for a lot of years to come. Overall, for the Boston Red Sox, I'm giving them a grade of a C+. Um, personally, depth-wise, I don't think that Nick York has a lot, uh, like, a lot meaning to it right now in order to give them a higher grade. However, I, I'm leaning on this draft probably ends up being more of a B, a B plus range because of the strategy they executed. Shane Bloom, great picks. Moving on to Chicago, we have the Chicago Cubs where in the first round they took hometown kid Ed Howard. Y'all may know him. He did uh, play uh, as part of the all African American team from the Chicago area in the Little League World Series a couple years ago. He comes full circle. He was drafted 16th overall to his hometown team, the Chicago Cubs. In the second round, they took Burrow Caraway, third round Jordan Goo, fourth round Luke Little, fifth round Kian Moreno. 
Overall for the Cubs, I really like their pick with Ed Howard. I think he has a great bit of potential being a shortstop, second, second baseman. Overall, I'm giving the uh, Cubs the first A of the video, an A-. minus. Moving on to the south side of Chicago, where we have the Chicago White Sox. And man, was this an amazing draft for the White Sox. They started it off in the first round by taking Garrett Crochet. Then second round, taking Jared Kelly. Uh, third round, Addison Coffey. Fourth round, Cade um, Michaels. And fifth round, Bailey Horn. Now, the White Sox, they did take all pitchers right here, which does kind of scare me for their hitting. But again, if you think about it, they're going to most likely, they have Luis Robert locked up for a while. You have the um, young Nick Madrigal coming up. You have young Nomar Mazzara, Tim Anderson, Yohan Moncada. You guys still have a lot of young players, with, which leads me to believe that they don't need, um, they don't need these hitters coming up in the future. They have, a again, a loaded farm system. I think the White Sox were very wise taking a lot of pitchers right here. And then I got arguably the number one pitcher out of college with Garrett Crochet. He has definitely the best fastball in the draft. Left-handed pitcher comps to Chris Sale. And again, the White Sox took Chris Sale back a couple years ago. It's actually more than a couple years ago. Wow, I'm old now. Um, but again, Crochet, very high potential. And then they take the number one high school pitcher in the draft, Jared Kelly. Overall, I really like this draft for the White Sox. I'm giving y'all an A. Moving on to Cincinnati. The Cincinnati Reds um, went out the first round, and they took Austin Hendrick. Really like this pick right here. Um, second round, they took Christian Roa. Competitive balance round B, they took Jackson Miller. Third round, by Bryce Bonin. Fourth round, Mac Wainwright. Fifth round, Joe Boyle. Uh, like I said, Austin Hendrick, power-hitting left-handed hitter. I think he's going to get a lot of home runs in the hitters-friendly Great American Ballpark. Overall, for the Reds, I'm giving y'all a B+. Moving on to the Cleveland Indians. In the first round, they went out and shocked a few people. They took Carson Tucker, the brother of Kyle Tucker, in the first round. In the competitive bounce round A, they took Tanner Burns. Second round, they took Logan Allen. Third round, they took Petey Halpin. Fourth round, uh, Milan Tor Tolentino. And in the fifth round, they took Mason Hickman. Overall, for the Indians, I think you have a lot of potential in Carson Tucker. Again, he got to practice with major leaguers and his brother because of the coronavirus situation. So I think this is a great pick. High risk, high reward. Um, and overall, they had a lot of depth in their draft. So Indians, I'm giving you a grade of the B. Moving on to the Rockies, which had a very nice draft, if I do say so myself. And they went out ninth overall, and they picked up high school lefty Zach Veen. Wow, are the Rockies going to see a lot of home runs from this man in the future. The Rockies had a steal take getting Zach Veen, left-handed hitter out of high school, with the ninth overall pick. Zach Veen is going to hit lots of home runs in hitters-friendly cores, uh, field in Colorado. I think it's going to he's going to play really great in that ballpark in competitive balance round A They took Drew Romo second round Chris McC McC McMahon third round Sam Weatherly fourth round Case Williams and fifth round Jack Blogram Overall for the Rockies. I'm giving you guys a grade of an A I really liked what you did there Detroit Tigers number one pick in this year's draft of course y'all know they took Spencer Tokelson Tokelson, um, very high potential. I think the right pick right there. And then the Tigers followed out the draft strong, taking Dylan Dingler second, Daniel Cabrera third uh, in competitive bounce round B, Trey Cruz in uh, round three, fourth round uh, Gage Workman, fifth round Colt Keith. I think overall this draft was great. I really like Spencer, Tolk Spencer Tokelson along with Dylan Dingler. I think that is a great pair. Those bats are going to prove really strong in your guys' future in the middle of the lap in the middle of that lineup. Next up, we have the Houston Astros. With what first round pick they had, I don't know. With what second round pick they had, again, I don't know. But they did have a competitive bounce round A for losing Garrett Cole. In which case, they took Alex Sant Santos, third round Ty Brown. Fourth round, Zach Daniels. Fifth round, Shea Whitcomb. Again, what is there much to say? The Astros are cheaters. Overall grade, C-. minus. Next up, we have the Kansas City Royals, and they got a steal of the pick at number one. Asa Lacy somehow fell to the number four position. Competitive bounce round A, they took Nick Lofton. Second round, uh, Ben Hernandez. Third round, Tyler Gentry. Fourth round, Christian Chamberlain. And fifth round, Will Clean. Overall, for uh, the Royals, I really like the pickup in Asa Lacy and Nick Lofton. I think those players are going to be really solid for y'all in the future. Overall, for the grade I'm giving y'all, A-. Next up, we have the Los Angeles Angels of An Anaheim. And they went out and they addressed their starting pitching need big time with their first overall pick. They t picked up Reed Detmers. Did not have a second-round pick because they signed Anthony Rendon. Third-round pick, they took David Calab Calabresi. 
Fourth round, they took Warner Bal Blakey. F fifth round, they took Adam Seminaris. Hardest names I've had to pronounce so far of all the teams. Overall, I really like how you guys go out and pick up Reed Detmers uh, with your eighth round pick. Uh, I think he's going to be a solid player out of high school to pick up for you guys. Help that rotation that is in desperate need. Overall, great pick there. I'm giving you guys a grade of a B. Next up, we have the, uh, moving over to the Dodgers, the Los Angeles Dodgers. In the first round, they took Bobby Miller. In the second round, Landon Knack. In the uh, competitive balance round B, they took Clayton Beater. Third round, Jake Vogel. Fifth round, Carson Taylor. Fourth round, Carson Taylor. And fifth round, Gavin Stone. Dodgers, overall, I'm giving you guys a B. Bobby Miller is said to be a steal at the uh, 29th pick in the draft. So, who knows? There's a lot of potential in this uh, pick right there. Next up, we have the Miami Marlins with a third overall pick in this year's draft. They took Max Mayer. Again, what are you guys doing? Second round, they took uh, Dax Fulton. Competitive bounce round B, they took Tyler Nicholas. Third round, Zach McCambly. Third, fourth round, Jake Etter. Fifth round, Kyle Hurt. Again, what are y'all doing with the third pick in the draft? I mean, Max Mayer, yes, he does have a strong fastball and does have a lot of potential, but Emerson Hancock and Ace Lacy were both available. Personally, I both like them over them. But overall, the Miami Marlins had a strong remainder of the draft, giving them an overall grade of a B plus. Next up, we'll be talking about the Milwaukee Brewers, and the Brewers had a steal of a pick in the first round, getting Garrett Mitchell out of UCLA. He is the guy with uh, type 1 diabetes playing through it. Great for him. Uh, second round, they took Freddie Zamora. Third round, Xavier Warren. Fourth round, Joey Weimer. And then fifth round, Hayden Centrally. I think great pick of Garrett Mitchell. He was ranked 11th overall in the draft. If they can tamp into his his power, Garrett Mitchell is going to be a strong player for you. Along wrong with Freddie Zamora. I really like what you guys did there, Milwaukee, giving you guys a grade of an A-. Next up, we'll be talking about the Minnesota Twins, who have, again, a strong farm system. But personally, for me, this draft didn't cut it for them. First round, they took Aaron Sabato. Second round, they took Alaric Solari. Fourth round, they took Marco Raya. And then fifth round, they took Kalai Rosario. Overall, not much to say in this draft. Again, the Twins did win the AL Central, so they had a lower pick than usual. Uh, but overall, in this draft, I'm giving the, the Twins a grade of a C. Next up, I'm going to be talking about my New York Mets. Again, the Mets go out big in this year's draft. They have proved to be pretty good at drafting players. And personally, like I said, I was a little bit salty, as you guys, uh, if you guys were in the live stream, when uh, they took Pete Crow Armstrong. Of course, I wanted Bryce uh, Jarvis to fall to the Mets, but Pete Crow Armstrong quickly grew on me as a player. Great personality. Kid out of high school. Again, the third straight year, they take a high school player first round. Second round, they take JT uh, Ginn. Competitive bounce round B for Zach Wheeler. I took Isaiah Green. Third round, Anthony Walters. Fourth round, Michael Dyer. And fifth round, Eric Orzi. Now, JT Ginn was a, a, a potential top 10 pick in this year's draft had he not blown out his elbow uh, prior to uh, in, in this spring. So I think JT Ginn is a great pickup if he can get uh, if he can recover from Tommy John surgery, come back strong, a top 10 pick in the second round that is an amazing pickup as well as, as Isaiah Green. He is potentially the best player that the Mets picked up right here. He's a power hitting center fielder to go with a co uh, contact fielding center field Pete Crow Armstrong. Overall for the Mets, really happy about this draft. No bias here. A lot of uh, well, a lot of different um, places I did research with rated the Mets an A. I'm giving the Mets an A plus to go with the Tigers. Next up, we have the New York Yankees, and they uh, forfeited their second and fifth round picks due to signing Garrett Cole. The first round, they took Austin Wells, uh, Kyle Schwarber comps right there. Uh, third round, they took Trevor Hulver, and fourth round, Beckway. Overall, giving you guys a C, not much there. Next up, we have the Oakland A's, and they were a little bit confusing taking Tyler Solderstrom, not the best available player, but again, going for positional needs uh, at catcher right there. Uh, second round, took Jess Criswell. Third round, Michael Goldberg. Fourth round, Dance Acker, and then fifth round, Stevie Emanuels. Overall, for the A's, I'm going to give you guys a grade of a B minus. Didn't, not the strongest of gra uh, drafts right here, but again, there's some potential there. Philadelphia Phillies, next up. First round, they took Mick Abel. They did not have a second round pick because they signed Zach Wheeler out of free agency. They gave the Mets um, Isaiah Green. Thank you, Philly. Uh, third round, they took Casey Martin. Fourth round, Carson Ragslide. And then fifth round, Baron Radcliffe. Overall, I really like Casey Martin and uh, Mick Abel. Very strong draft for you guys, considering you did not have a second-round pick. Overall grade for you guys, B+. Next up, we'll be talking about the Pittsburgh Pirates and their draft. And first overall, they took Nick Gonzalez, competitive bounce round A, Carmen Malinsky. 
Second round, Jared Jones. Third round, Nick Garcia. Uh, fourth round, Jack Hartman. And fifth round, Logan Hoffman. Overall, really like the draft. Really like Nick Gonzalez. I think he's going to play really well in Pittsburgh for you guys. I really like his swing. He's going to be a great player for you guys. So overall, giving you guys an A on the draft, I really like it. Next up for the San Diego Padres, uh, when the first round they took Robert Hassel the second. Com competitive balance round A, they took Justin Lange. Second round, Owen Casey. Third round, Cole Wilcox. Fourth round, Levi Thomas. Fifth round, Jagger Haynes. Overall, you guys had the biggest steal in the draft, taking Cole Wilcox in the third round. I really like that pick. I really wish the Mets went out and got that player, but I think JT Ginn and Isaiah Green are both strong. So overall, the Padres, I really didn't like your uh, first round and competitive bounce round A pick in the second round. Hassel's is going to play kind of well in Petco. Overall, I'm giving you guys a grade of a B. Next up, we have a confusing team, the San Francisco Giants. It was only a couple years ago when they took Joey Bart uh, top overall in the draft in the first round. And here they are again taking a switch hitting catcher, Patrick Bailey, in the draft. Second round, they took Casey Schmidt. Competitive balance round B, the first pick, they took Nick Sweeney. In the second competitive balance round pick for Will Smith and Madison Bumgarner, they took Jimmy Glowenke. Um, in the third round, they took Kyle Harrison uh, from De La Salle High School. My uncle works there, so shout out De La Salle. Uh, fourth round, they took RJ Dabovich. In fifth round, they took uh, Ryan Murphy from Homestead High School. Just kidding, Ryan. You're not drafted by the Giants as, as much as you wish. But overall, the Giants, very confusing draft right here. They took another catcher, so yes, you take the best available player, but again, I still think there is better overall players available in this draft when you guys uh, took Patrick Bailey. Not the biggest fan of this draft. You could have had Garrett Mitchell, I think, would be better than Bailey, but switch in catcher, who knows what y'all can do. Overall grade of a C-plus for the Giants. Next up, we have the Seattle Mariners, who had Emerson Hancock fall in their first-round pick right into their laps. Second round, they took Zach Deluche. Uh, competitive balance round from the Braves, they took Connor Phillips. Third round, Caden Polovich. Uh, fourth round, Tyler Keenan. And fifth round, Taylor Dollard. Overall, for the Mariners, you mean A minus. I really like how Emerson Hancock is projected to play out for Seattle, another pitcher. And I really think strong draft. Next up, we have the St. Louis Cardinals, in which case, in the 21st pick in the draft, they took Jordan Walker. Second round, Mason Wynn. Competitive bounce round B, they took Tick Hens. Competitive bounce round from the Rays in the Matthew Liberator trade, they took Alex Ber Burleson. Third round, Levi Prater. Uh, fourth round, Eden Bettle. And then fifth round, LJ Jones. The uh, the fourth, I think. I'm not good with uh, Roman numerals. But overall, for the Cardinals, I really like this draft. Again, you take getting two competitive bounce round picks. You can't really screw that up much. Overall grade of an A-. minus. Next up, we have the Tampa Bay Rays. In which case, um, in the first round, they took Nick, Nick Bitsko. Competitive bounce round A, they took uh, Alika Williams. Second round, Ian Seymour. Third round, Hunter Barnhart. Fourth round, Tanner Murray. Fifth round, Jeff Hackinson. So overall for the Rays, really like this draft. Again, you guys have a great farm system, so who knows what you guys can do. Overall grade with an A-. Next up, we have the worst draft, I think, in my opinion, of the of this in the of the 2020 draft, the Texas Rangers. First round, they took Justin Foscu. Second round, Evan Carter. Third round, Teco Robbie. Uh, fourth round, Dylan McLean. Fifth round, Thomas Sagasi. Overall for the Rangers, D+, plus, not much there. Why do you take Justin Foskey? There is definitely better players available. Down to the final two teams, and here we are uh, with the Toronto Blue Jays, who had probably the biggest steal of the first round, getting Austin Martin falling all the way to fifth. That was a great pickup right there for you guys, that major draft. Second round, they took CJ Van Eek. Third round, Trent Palmer. Fourth round, Nick Frosco. And fifth round, they took Zach Britton from the New York Yankees. Just kidding, there's another Zach Britton in the major leagues right now. Overall for the Blue Jays, again, having Austin Martin fall for you to the fifth overall pick, very nice. You guys are getting a grade of an A. On to the last team in today's video, we have the Washington Nationals, where first over first round they took Cade Cavalli, second round Cole Henry, competitive bounce round B, you had Samuel Infante, third round Holden Powell, uh, fourth round Bradley Brady Lindsay, Lindsley, and then fifth round Mitchell Parker. Overall, for the uh, uh, Nationals, I really like the pick of Cade Cavalli. He, sh he shows that he's going to be dominant for the Nationals. Not looking forward to facing him as a Mets fan. Overall, for the Nash Nationals, giving them a grade of a B plus. So that was my uh, my grades for each MLB team in the 2020 MLB draft. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section below. What uh, what teams uh, had a good draft, what teams had a bad draft, along with give your grades if you want in the comment section below. Again, if you guys are new here, Hit that subscribe button, like the video. It really helps us out at Undefeated. 
uh, we really appreciate around here and uh, come back tomorrow where we'll have another video I'll see you all in the next one thanks for watching